<clears throat> good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. And yes, this evening we are going back to the Judge Rotenberg's Internet Place of Hell on Earth. But before we get going, folks, a few of the usual disclaimers. First off, you are going to see the link to this report right there in the description box, alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Koya's massive archive on the subject. Also, we have the tin plate, sign your name, click on your senator, any ever-present, and self-explanatory change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. Now, folks, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of peoples with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. Also, folks, it is 4.15 in the afternoon. I am brain dead. 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 So, if I stumble over any of my words, my apologies in advance, all right? Okay, now, folks, remember, we just started in on the message... Massachusetts Department of Education's 2006 review that started due to the stir that the New York Special Education Department drew up with their damning 2006 report. But Massachusetts, they don't have the balls that New York does, and they refuse to comment on court-appointed and therefore okay shock treatment. So let's see how these two reports compare side by side, shall we? All right, let's get going on it. So we stopped on page six. The report includes findings organized under the 18 compliance areas listed in the table of contents. The findings explain the ratings or determinations by the team about the implementation status of the compliance criteria reviewed within each of the 18 areas. God, these people like to hear themselves talk. Can any of you write a report without making it a fucking novel? Sorry, just saying. The ratings indicate those criteria that were found by the team to be substantially implemented or implemented in a commendable manner. Of course you did. So you didn't take anything New York said seriously, did you? Well, no, they're too stupid to learn, Tiff. Bullshit. Definition of turn section of the report where criteria were found to be either partially implemented or not implemented, the private school must purpose corrective action to bring those areas into compliance with the controlling statute or regulation. In some instances, the team may have found certain requirements to be fully implemented, but made a specific comment on the school's implementation methods that may require response from the private school. The private school is expected to incorporate corrective action into any program improvement plans, including the school's professional and paraprofessional staff development plan. Well, if you're using DDS to try to enforce it, good luck. Okay, so this is the table of contents. Program area, required information, notifications, and postings, da, 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 it shows you all this. Can we get to the report, please? I think we can understand what those terms mean. Okay, so criterion number 1.2, program student description, a narrative provided that describes the program's Operational capacity. Oh, for the love of God, can we please get past all this? Sorry, folks, we do not have an edit button. This is very much, can we please get to the point? I knew this was going to be another Bernstein train wreck. Can we get to the damn report, please, sometime this fucking year? Okay, apparently everything is in boxes. Oh, this is ridiculous. All right, folks, I guess we're stuck. We go back up to page six. <sighs> OK, 
Okay, so we read through that, so now we're going to read through all their crap. Okay. Area 1, required information notification and postings. Area 2, administration, legal, and financial documentation. Like, they've got nuts answering. Area 3, administration manuals and handbooks, not rated. Area 4, disclosure of information. 4.2, partially implemented. Why am I not surprised? Area 5, admissions, procedures, and coordination, collaboration with school districts. 5.2, partially implemented. Not surprised. Area 7, educational program requirements, curriculum frameworks, and state assessments. 7.1, 7.2, area educational program requirements, individual education programs. So 8.5, 8.11, 8.4, 8.7. I think these are actually dates. Area 9, Educational Program Requirements, Student Discipline and Behavior Management. And Area 10, Educational Staffing Requirements, Student Teachers, Student Child Care Worker Rates. 10.2, 10.1, 10.4. Area 11, Educational Staff Requirements, Personal Policies, Qualifiers, and Responsibilities. It says Other Criteria Requiring Response. Area 12, Educational Staffing Requirements, Staff Training, Partially Implemented. Who surprised? Area 14, Requirements for Daily Care. Other Criteria Requiring Response. How much shit did they not respond to? Let's see. Area 15, parent and student involvement. Oh, nothing. Health and medical services. Nothing. Transportation safety. Nothing. Student records. Partially implemented. <clears throat> Definition of terms for rating each compliance criterion. Commendable. The criterion is implemented in an exemplary manner, significantly beyond the requirements. Implemented. The requirement or criterion is substantially met, partially implemented. The requirement in one or more important aspects is not entirely met, not implemented. The requirement is totally or substantially not met, not applicable or not rated. The requirement does not apply to private school or not monitored during the review. <coughs> okay, criterion 1.2, program student description, program capacity. A narrative is provided that describes the program's operational capacity, identified population of students to be served, including the current and or projected enrollment, maximum enrollment ages or students, and their educational and behavioral characteristics, philosophy, goals, and objectives, mechanisms for delivery of services. Department of Education comment. At the commencement of the program in view in January of 2006, the school's operational capacity for students was 207. The Department of Early Education and Care, EEC, is provisionally licensed 25 residences. There are 10 other residences that house school-aged children with disabilities, which remains licensed by the Department of Redaction. Fuck you people. You basically house them in hell. Criterion 2.1 Legal Status The program provides a description of its legal status, including names of individuals and principal parties with ownership, oversight, and key administrative responsibilities. The program maintains complete documentation on ownership, governance, management, mission, and mechanisms for service delivery. Why the fuck? Oh, we'll tell you who the owners are. We don't know where those medical documents are, though, right? Reading implemented. Response required now. Reading implemented my EOS. Okay. 2.2. Approvals, licenses, or certificate certificates of inspection. The program has current licenses, approvals, and certificates of inspection by state and local agencies for building occupancy, safety inspection in all buildings by the Department of Public Safety or a local building inspector, Annual fire safety inspection by local fire employment, lead point inspection if applicable, health safety, 
Health safety, yes, you give a damn so much about those students, don't you, Massachusetts? Approval by the local school committee. Approval by EEC to operate a group care facility as a special education day care center. A sheet's inspection or date when building was constructed and statement from appropriate authority that the building is abscestosphere. PCB inspection or date when the building was constructed and statement from appropriate authority that the building and all lights ballasts are free from PCBs. Other inspections that may be required by local and state authorities, if applicable, a state is to whether previous application was made of approval and the action was taken on it. The program has a current license from the Department of Education, Early Education and Care, 102 CMR3, to operate as a residential school. Rating implemented. God help us all. So basically, these people of Massachusetts are not going to talk about anything of actual importance. Whether this school is actually teaching these kids anything or about what goes on behind closed doors. I'm already seeing a very distinct difference between this one and the New York's very damning report. Department of Education Findings. The Judge Rotenberg Center has provisional licenses for 25 residences through the Department of Early Education and Care. The school must notify the Department of Education of any changes to its approval license status from any state agencies. Criterion number 2.4, the private school program maintains good standing with state and federal tax authorities, provides notification of outstanding tax liabilities. Oh, good for them. Criterion number 2.5, financial management. The private school program maintains accurate records of receipts and expenditures, consistent with the regulations of the Massachusetts Operational Services Division, Together with the program budget and a list of proposed tuition rates for all publicly and privately funded students attending the school, including students from outside Massachusetts. Oh, yes, we'll give them a fucking round of applause for knowing how to do their fucking accounts. God, I hate people. 3.1 Policies and Procedures Manual. All approved public and private special education schools shall maintain on-site policies and procedures manual and shall provide written notice to parents enrolled in students that the copies of each such policies and procedures are available upon request. Oh yes, because that's going to inform them what you all do to them behind closed doors, isn't it? Implemented. Response required? No. 3.1, the program's manual must contain policies and procedures in all subject areas listed in the appendix about this, of this application. The policies and procedures include, but are not limited to, advanced notice of program facility change, student admissions, child abuse and neglect, which you all don't fucking report on because shocking is not abuse. Discipline policies and procedures, suspicion and termination, student discipline and behavior management, physical restraint, student runaway, notification of serious incidents, Form 2, coordination and collaboration with school districts, revisions and change, IEP revisions and changes, IEP transition planning, IEP transition services, of which we have already been told by multiple other services, they have none. But let's see how you lie, Massachusetts. State and district-wide assessments, program reports, least restrictive placements, their idea of least restrictive is a joke, evacuation and emergency procedures, parent involvement, orientation for new to parents and students, which is a joke, change of students' legal status, obtaining parental consent, which remember folks, they don't actually tell the parents what all these kids are actually shocked for. They just leave it to the vague, unwanted behaviors. Change of student's legal status, obtaining parental consent, student involvement, registering complaints, parents and students, student protections, of which there are none, supervision of students, student records, new staff orientation and annual in-service training, student transportation and transportation safety, Research, experimentation, fundraising, publicity, and observation. 
Appendix with all signed and dated assurances sent to the department in connection with this application implemented. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. They were going to sit there and tell people that the abuse that we all see, that we have seen in DPPC after report after report after report after report, you're going to blow smoke up our ass and tell us it's not happening. I knew it. In spite of court case after court case showing what's really happening. Oh, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. Now let's see what more smoke they blow up our ass to make themselves smell like roses. Employment practices in private special education program in general are free from discrimination on the basis of race, color, National origin, sex, or disability. In particular, facility salary scales are based on conditions and responsibilities of employment without regard to race, color, national origin, sex, or disability. And employment recruitment is aimed at reaching all groups, including members of the linguistic, ethnic, and racial minorities, males, and females, and persons with disabilities. Yeah, I'm sure you have a person with disabilities working for you. Mind call bull. Oh, you're going to tell me that's implemented. Who's the person with the disability teaching those kids? Because I can tell you right now, no one with a disability that worked there would fucking agree that any of this was goddamn okay. And you better bet we fucking whistleblow. Healthcare manual. We'll get to that tomorrow, but we're seeing a pattern here. Yes. Massachusetts is lying at its fucking ass. So they're not only going to tell you at the beginning of the report that that they're not going to address the safety of the shops. They're not really addressing anything that was brought up in that New York 2006 report. They're not bringing up the substandard keeping of food. They're not bringing up that the kids have to earn every single fucking bite of food. And while they're doing it, they let the food get inappropriately cold. They're not addressing any of the health and safety concerns that any of the New York observers have brought up. No, they're going to sit there and try to tell you that New York is lying and know that this school is completely compliant and completely the safe. And just like those fucking parents going to sit there, you just don't understand. It's garbage. Garbage. You're going to sit there and tell me they're in full compliance with food and safety. In spite of two separate reports, two different agencies that have spoken to the contrary. You're going to sit there and tell me that there is no real abuse going on and that the student safety is of the utmost concern to them when we have seen on this channel multiple reports to the DPPC spanning from 1999 all the way to now. Physical assault. Burns from the device. An arm that was completely blackened by the device. Bruises, burns, sexual assault. The list goes on. But according to the Massachusetts Special Education Department, none of that's happening. Really. Explain the video footage. Now on that note, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close out for this evening. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. And the few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this evening. And as always, we here at Smelling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.